using Skype, Zoom, Google Meet and Microsoft Teams safely for remote service delivery. Although COVID-19 has restricted the movements of child protection actors, technology is enabling us to continue working to support children and their families. Video calling options such as Skype, Zoom, Google Meet and Microsoft Teams may help us to continue case management, education programming, along with remote training, coaching and supervision. Let's take a look at the pros and cons of each platform and how we can use them safely starting with Skype. Skype is useful as you can set up an account for free and make unlimited video and conference calls to other Skype accounts. End-to-end -end encryption of messages and calls means conversations are private and secure and there are automatic additional security settings for accounts held by children including only allowing people in a child's contact list to call or message them, hiding age, date of birth and gender information on children's profiles, and hiding children in such results unless their exact username is searched for. But there are some potential online safety risks associated with Skype. With the exception of children, all users are searchable and can be messaged by people they don't know and fake user profiles can easily be created with no identity checks required. Fortunately, there are ways to set up your account safely. You can do this by minimizing the amount of personal information available on your profile. To do this, go to Settings, Account and Profile, and then Your Profile. Remove any data that's not required, such as location, date of birth, gender, and contact details. You can make sure your profile picture doesn't identify you by using an avatar or logo instead of a personal photograph. In profile settings, you can adjust whether you can be found in searches that do not match your exact username. Once you are set up, remember to get consent from all participants and their parents or caregivers if they are children before adding them as a contact or adding them to a group chat. Make sure you have a co-host who is part of every group chat and call. Only add contacts you know and need for the program. Decline unexpected or unknown contacts. Block contacts who share or request inappropriate content. And never share personal data, photos, passwords or other personal information. Report requests for this through your organization. Let's move on to Zoom. Some of the advantages of choosing Zoom are that all accounts are automatically set to private, your location data is not recorded or shared, the one-to-one -one chat function can be disabled. Additional features, such as breakout rooms, are useful for capacity building activities, and education and business accounts have a participant reporting feature, allowing you to report a participant for inappropriate behavior. The online safety risks associated with using Zoom are that no specific parental controls are available, only the host and co-host can report comments and remove participants, there may be uninvited attendees if appropriate settings are not put in place, and group calls on the free version are limited to 40 minutes. For longer calls, the host must have a paid Zoom account. There are some steps you can take to use Zoom safely. Before your call, put a password on your meeting. This will only allow invited guests who have received the password to join the call. To do this, log in to your Zoom account, click Meetings, find the right meeting, then click Edit. Under Security, select Passcode. Under security, you can also enable the waiting room which will allow you to approve or remove individuals trying to enter the meeting. During your call, you should assign one of your colleagues as a co-host to help you monitor and manage any inappropriate behavior. To do this, click participants, locate the individual in the list, then click more and make co-host. You can limit who can share the screen by clicking the arrow beside the screen share icon, then clicking advanced sharing options under who can share. Select only host. You can also limit who can chat with who. Click security and under allow participants to 
and click chat. During a Zoom call, you can also click on the ellipses to select whether participants can chat with each other or just with the host or both. You can change other settings or use the suspend participant activities to pause all interactive elements of a call while you report or remove a participant. Finally, remember to get consent before recording any part of your call. Another platform is Google Meet. Some reasons to choose Google Meet are that free accounts are available with a Google account which you can also set up for free. Voice and video calls are free with unlimited duration. Users can report abusive behavior directly in the platform and features such as polling, breakout rooms and Q&A are useful for capacity building sessions. The online safety risks associated with Google Meet are that content shared is not considered secure and may be accessed by third parties. To join a call, every invitee must have a Google account and calls and meetings cannot be secured with a password. To use Google Meet safely, it's best to set certain limits. You can limit who can join automatically by listing the guests. To do this, open the event in your calendar and click the Guests tab. You can also limit who can share their screen. In your Meet video call, click Host Controls at the bottom of the screen and click Turn Screen Sharing On or Off. On the same page, you can also limit who can chat with who. Click Host Controls at the bottom of the screen, then click to turn off the participant chat. Finally, let's take a look at Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams is available at no extra charge for up to 300 users in an organization with a Microsoft 365 account. The platform doesn't record or share location data, and it gives you the option to create a team channel allowing you to share files, take and share meeting notes, chat, and post announcements. But there are also some risks. Users cannot report concerns during call or chat, and you can't disable one-to-one -one chats or photo and video sharing. How can you use Microsoft Teams safely? To start, you can activate the lobby so only you can enter the meeting directly. You can then control who else enters the meeting. To do this, find the meeting in your team's calendar or go to the meeting invitation and select meeting options under who can pass by the lobby, select only me. You can also limit who can present by making yourself and your co-host presenters and making all of your participants attendees. In meeting options, change who can present to only me or to specific people and select yourself and your co-host. Make sure you also end the session properly to ensure that all participants have left the call and are not continuing unsupervised. To do this, click more options in your meeting controls and then end meeting. When it comes to bringing a group of people together for remote discussions, training or supervision, video calling platforms and apps can be extremely useful tools provided they are used safely.